Man, you come straight out of a comic. Welcome to Straight Out of a Comic Book. We are talking Marvel news, DC news, uh, television, and some movie news. And so I don't want to hesitate. Let's go ahead and jump into the first story of today. And we're going to jump into video game news. We're going to start a little different this episode. We're going to start with some video game news. Now, uh, as I said in the beginning, we are talking about the return of Mark Hamill as the Joker. Mark Hamill, who you know as Luke Skywalker, who you know from other various roles, or not, you may just know him as Luke Skywalker, and of course, the infamous Joker from, of course, the um, Batman animated series. Mark Hamill is back as the voice of the Joker. Technically, technically, technically he's back. Um... What uh, he is returning the voice of the Joker in the um, updated version of the multiverse game. So I'm not sure if you're aware the multiverse game is kind of like um, WB's version of Smash Bros. You know, it's uh, it's a version of Smash Bros. where a whole bunch of different characters have come together, such as Batman, uh, Tom and Jerry. I believe Rick and Morty was on there at one time. Uh, Bugs Bunny, where you could have a all out brawl um on this video game and now the joker is one of those new characters that have been unlocked and mark hamill will be voicing that joker um at one point though mark hamill did state that he would no longer do the voice of joker after the unfortunate passing of kevin conroy who is the voice of batman i know we've had a lot of other people play the voice of batman but we already know if you if you if you or a Batman fan. Kevin Conroy is the voice of Batman. Um, he, uh, Mark Hamill did state at one time that he uh, would retire from voicing him again. But, you know, just like most actors, uh, rappers, and musicians that we know, retirement is just not a real thing when it comes to this industry, okay? It, it, it isn't. You can say, like, hey, I'm done, but you can always come back. And so even though he did say that it was very poetic, I, I'm not mad at him for revising his role. Uh, well, I mean, reprising, excuse me, his role as the voice of the Joker for this video game. Now, Gonna be completely honest about this. Didn't know this video game was still being played. No, I had no idea people still played uh, multiverse. <laughs> no idea. I thought this game was done and in the books. Kind of, you know, but it's been it's been sticking around like Brawlhalla on Xbox. You know what I'm saying? If you've ever played Brawlhalla, it's another type of stage level fighting game uh, similar to Smash Bros. Uh, cute, adorable characters. Some of them are mimicked from other cartoons, uh, other shows. Like, we've had WWE characters in Brawlhalla. Uh, but, you know, it's just one of those, like, I don't want to say, like, the great value version of Smash Bros, but just a different, you know, a different version of it. Same thing with Multiverse. Um, I remember at one point where it was free to download. I believe it still is free to download. Um, but I thought this was one of those games that was kind of like a trend. Like it was here, um, it, it did its thing at a point, and then it just, you know, packed its bags and disappeared. But apparently it is still going strong. It still has a community. Um, I, I didn't know, and I'm, I'm very just shocked to know that they're still adding characters kind of using that same format as Super Smash Bros. And, um, using and, you know, releasing different characters and one being the Joker and Mark Hamill. I, this, this is a good look for multiverse. Like it did definitely make me want to go check out. I'm like, okay, okay, who, well, what other characters are on here? And who else have y'all been releasing? Because I, like I said, at one point, Rick and Morty was a part of the game. Um, don't know if they still are. So one thing I did here was some characters don't remain on the game. It's kind of like they pop in and then they're there for a certain amount of time and then it kind of gets taken out. Not sure if that's still the thing though, um, but I think they may have changed that. 
Shout out to one of our people over on YouTube, uh, Sheldon Ross, that said, man, his kids are playing the hell out of that game. Um, and so, again, like I said, I did not know this was still hot in the streets. Did not know that, man. Uh, shout out to uh, Drew G as well, who is checking out on the show, man. Appreciate it. We are blessed and highly trill out here. If you've uh, gotten a chance to check out Morning Cup of Dough, I got a, a, a great opportunity to be a guest on there. And um, with Morning Cup of Dough, he has this incredible format where, you know, they sit, talk about, you know, how we are talking about what's uh, going on lately with guests. And then they create a whole song on the spot, on the spot right there live for everybody to see from the beat to the recording to exporting it and making the artwork. It's a great concept, so uh, I'm glad to see him consistently doing it. Uh, I wish nothing but the best for him on there. Definitely think Spotify should check it out. You know, just throwing that out there. Um, but yeah, I got a chance to be on there. We came up with a song called Blessed and Highly Trill, um, and it, it, it came out great. So you can go over to Doughboy's uh, channel on YouTube. You can check out the song, but then also check out his show as well. It, it, it's a very cool show. But yes, um... I am still kind of surprised that this move, that this uh, game is going on. But, man, shout out to this game being able to uh, bring Mark Hamill back out of retirement and give us that wonderful voice that is the Joker, man. Because, again, like I said to him, he's my Joker. Don't know why my camera's doing that. Don't know why my camera is being an a-hole right now. Hold on, y'all. Don't know why. Don't know why it's doing that. Hold on. All right. My my laptop, of course, will not want to be some type of way right now. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Where we at? Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good now. I don't know. Again, you already know. See, see, somebody see. Drew, Drew, because we said we blessed out here, look at what the devil tried to do. Look at what the devil was trying to do to your boy. You're like, oh, 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 you blessing how the trail out here, right? Man, fuck up the Logitech camera. But you ain't going to stop us. You're not going to stop us, devil. You ain't going to stop us. You take your ass back to hell, man. Like we said, we blessing how the trail out here. So, with that being said, we are going to move on to the next topic. We still in uh, the video game realm. Of course, we're still out here in these video game streets. And um, this one is not as, <laughs> not as positive as the previous story. And we are talking about the Suicide Squad, man. Shout out to uh, Jeremy P. jumping in to join us as well. Um, Suicide Squad. It has been confirmed that the Suicide Game, uh, I mean, that the game, the Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, um, contributed to a loss for Warner Brothers in the amount of $200 million. Two hundred million dollars. I just want that to sit in for a second. I just want, I just want you, I just, I just want y'all to just picture this. Walk with me if you will. You can either close your eyes or don't, but I just want you to have a vision of it. I want you to imagine we are all sitting in the room and we are the people who made this game. And we sat here thought we had a banger. Like, yo, hey man, listen. I ain't trying, I ain't trying to toot my own horn. But when it drops, we may have brought DC back. And someone walks into the into the into the room and tells us, hey, we lost $200 million off this video game. I'm not saying someone jumped out the window that day. But you best believe somebody tossed themselves out the window that day. $200 million. That is incredibly insane. And look, don't get me wrong. I know from COVID, the, the, the writer's strike, even the gamer strike that, uh, at, that had happened at one time, I know a lot went on. So I know a lot of people took hits, especially WB, 
um, during this time and everything like that. Not even just from video games, but from movies and not releasing the uh, Batwoman series, the Batwoman show that was already filmed and done from uh, uh, Coyote versus Acme, uh, Acme, and not releasing those. Man, Warner Brothers took a lot of hits before being able to merge and sell. Uh, with 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 uh, the other uh, companies that they were with, man. But I, I gotta say, man, um, Suicide Squad was ass. All right, it just it just wasn't great. Like concept wise, it seemed like it was there, but it just wasn't. And the problem about it was was that I feel like they picked the wrong story that's just me i feel like the suicide squad video game picked the wrong story uh you first of all a, a, you know as they say even in the comments as drew g stated no one wants to see you kill the justice league and then two no one wants to see these characters from the suicide squad kill the justice league like i don't want to see captain boomerang kill flash i don't want to see that I don't respect Boomerang like that enough to where it's like, okay, I want to see you off the flash. Like, I'd like to see you get the best of him, maybe, sure. But it was like, yo, all of the Suicide Squad that you picked made me not want to see that happen. Now, had you picked different missions for them to do in this, this could have been a lot better. I really wish that they would have made this kind of like, you know, and I, and, I, and I hate to throw this out there. Not even hate to throw this out there, but I just don't want the comparison to go too far away. But you should have given me a sort of maybe black, a mixture between Call of Duty and Left 4 Dead, which you tried to do, but you kind of went the wrong way on both of those. Like, this should have been really mission-based. Like, you should have let us join the Suicide Squad. You know what I'm saying? Like, it should have been something like that. Not that... It's this chaotic crisis where the Justice League is going crazy. Now we're just sending y'all in. No, you should have taken us as the Suicide Squad, connecting with Amanda Waller, and this is what you get. This is mission one. You do this, I'll knock this off your sentence, and just made them some crazy-ass missions. And when you won, if you did a good job, it showed you like all of the achievements you unlocked and how many years you knock off your sentence which is what the Suicide Squad, or, you know, as they call Task Force X, is supposed to be. But instead, you only gave us one chaotic mission that just did not land well. I didn't mind the way the game looked. I didn't even mind the mechanics of it. It was just the story just was not there, and how you tied everything in just didn't hit well. So for y'all to lose $200 million, it seems about right. But the only thing I will say to this, and I appreciate that I'd be walking for saying you like that idea, and I hope some of y'all, uh, some of the, uh, um, some of whoever else is watching this, also agree with that. I think that would have been a better way for the Suicide Squad to do this video game. But all it really kind of shows is that you need to make the open world Superman game. That's what DC needs to stick to. DC, you need to stick to making open world games with these characters that you have we've seen what it done what it did with batman we've seen what it did with spider-man give that to us with superman give us a superman open world game and he doesn't have to have all his powers just yet you can help that stuff get activated as you move on within the game give us that also too I know a lot of people may, I don't know how people may find this. Give us a first person Green Lantern game. Give us that. Give us a first person Green Lantern game where you get chosen. You don't have to play as one of the uh, characters. You can run into Hal Jordan. You can run into Jon Stewart. Let you be chosen for the ring. And then two, give us, I'm going to say four. Give us four stories that you can choose from. You can either choose to wear the green one. You can choose to do fear, which is, of course, the yellow one. You can choose to do anger, which is the red one, I believe, or the orange one or, or, or a blue one, a blue one. At least at least so you have two good ones, two bad ones. 
So you can choose your story. Or if you want to keep it real basic, just do yellow and green. Choose your destiny. Yellow or green. You get the ring, you know, it shows a whole shot of the of the of the of a spaceship coming down and everything like that. You get the ring and now you have to defend your galaxy. First person, it allows you if you have like the map right here, you can select what you like to do and you unlock different ways of how to use your ring. And just keep it in first person mode. I just gave DC two wonderful game ideas that you could have done instead of this bullshit Suicide Squad game that y'all shit the bed on. So that's just me with that. But I think if they, if they went with the game route in that particular way, a lot of stuff would change and a lot of stuff would look even better for DC gaming. So, um, you know, sorry to the people that did put a lot of the work into this, especially the people that developed it. Uh, from the back end of creating the characters, the 3D models, the rendering and stuff like that. Those are not easy jobs. It's very difficult to do a lot of long hours in doing it. So shout out to them and just, you know, unfortunately though, it did flop. So, you know, it is what it is. And But hopefully they can recover by either taking the ideas that I just gave for these video games or coming out with something a little bit better than what they did with the Suicide Squad. So that's going to wrap up our video game talk. Uh, now I want to jump into um, television. Television and streaming, I guess is what we'll call it. Television and streaming. So um, found out some new things uh, happening in the TV world and happening on streaming. Uh, first and foremost, the Office spinoff. All right, I, I take it everybody loves The Office. Everyone has seen The Office, uh, one of the best sitcom shows. Well, I wouldn't call it a sitcom, but best television shows, or at least the top 20. I'll say top 20 television shows um, ever. It's getting a spinoff. Uh, it has always been talked about doing the spinoff. Uh, wasn't sure how it was going to go, uh, but we have now found out new news about the Office spinoff. It will not be a reboot. It will not be a continuation, technically. So, uh, but what we have found out is um, this white woman and Ron Weasley's older brother that be training dragons are going to be the leads in this new Office spinoff. Now, the show will take place in the Office universe. So it will be in that same timeline as the Scranton branch for Dunder and Mifflin. It will be all in that same universe. Now, I'm not sure if it's around the same time that um, the office was being filmed and stuff like that. I, I'm not sure, you know, like if they ever gave it a year that they were doing this in the office. So we don't know exactly what year it's happening, but we do know that it's in the same universe. So, you know, uh, Michael is there. Jim Halbert is there, as well as Pam, as well as Dwight. They are somewhere floating within that universe. And this one is going to be the same type of style, a mockumentary, um, and it's going to be focusing on a dying newspaper. Um, so it's going to be a dying newspaper, which I guess is kind of around our time then of just getting around uh, a newspaper dying, especially with everything becoming digital, everything moving into blogs instead of, uh, you know, traditional interviews and showing how this paper uh, needs to do what it can do to survive. Um, not going to say that I, um, I don't have a particular opinion about it. Oh, excuse me. I don't have a particular opinion about it just yet. Uh, I like to see a trailer for it. I like to see who else is being added to it. I like the idea of what it is just because myself, I did used to work uh, for a magazine company and actually doing their layouts um, uh, for back in Houston, laying out their uh, PDFs and InDesign to go to print. And I saw the struggles at, at what it was for that from trying to maintain that versus the digital age where I can just pick up my phone and then see what's going on, or I can go to a website or, you know, how we do now can go to Instagram. So I saw the issues that came along with trying to remain a printed company. 
So that's what does have me intrigued. If there are going that route and I look forward to seeing what they will do with it. Um, like I said, I, I'll hold, res I'll hold my, uh, I'll, I'll reserve my opinion for it until I see a trailer. Um, until I see a trailer and I see who else is in it because, um, not, not knocking the stars that they have for it, but it, it it's kind of like you have to see who's the ensemble cast and if it's going to work. You know, like Steve Carell, of course, is is an incredible actor, really helped uh, carry the show. But he had so many other people along with him that played their part very well. Like, you know, if you wanted to put it to basketball, all of them were the Bulls in, in 96. They were all the Bulls. Like you had you had a hitter team like that was the even even to go past just the Bulls. That was the dream team of of an ensemble cast because everybody worked well and it didn't work if one person wasn't there as we kind of saw with when Steve Carell took his exit you know you can kind of see it kind of slump down because that dynamic shifted and really changed so um we're gonna see I'm waiting to see who's the rest of the cast before I give my judgment on the new office spinoff no date as to when it will premiere or how it's going to be shown if it's going to be exclusively on peacock if they're going to actually put it on cable um nothing has really been given just the fact of what it's going to be about and who are the stars um and you know uh to our crowd like shawnee who says she hasn't seen a full episode of the office not gonna lie to you i didn't see this until maybe a couple of years ago and i think that was like during the pandemic I saw The Office and then I finally watched it. It is a great show. I will say that. It is a great show uh, if you want to just sit down and kind of check it out. But it is one of those things of if you missed it, I'm not mad that you missed it. And I'll even uh, give you one further, Shawnee, so you don't feel, you know, like this emoji like you put out. I've never seen Friends. I've never watched a full episode of Friends in my entire time I've been here on this earth. I have not watched a full episode of Friends, and I don't see myself watching Friends. So don't, 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 you know, just like how I created Black Blasphemy, you know what, you're not going to be the only person thrown under the bus. I'll get under there with you too. So now it is out there. That's why I created that show, Black Blasphemy, for the, this particular reason. You've never seen an episode of The Office. I've never seen an episode of Friends. So, hey, we are in the shit together so uh that was one thing of television news another thing um as far as tv shows going ted two ted my boy ted man listen ted has been renewed for season two uh the ted uh ted of course what started off as a uh movie from the mind of seth mcfarland uh, transition into a TV series. It is a prequel to the Ted movies uh, showing Ted and uh, of course uh, John who was uh, played by Mark Wahlberg. I was going to say Mark Calloway. Man, been thinking about The Undertaker this week for some reason. Um, but him and John who was again originally played by Mark Wahlberg. It's showing them a little uh, uh, the prequel uh, with John in high school. So it is showing them, it is a hilarious show. If you are a fan of Family Guy, you are not going to be disappointed watching this. If you're not a fan of Family Guy, you can still watch this show and love it. Listen, I don't watch Family Guy as much. I'm not a big Family Guy Simpsons uh, person either. I was at one point, you know, kind of strayed away from it and everything. So, um... I, I haven't been a big, huge fan of them. You know, no, no, you know, I respect it, of course, because of how long it's been here. But Ted, I love. Like, like I love the character of Ted, and it, it did a great job seamlessly transitioning into a series. If you haven't watched it, it is available on Peacock. It is seven episodes. The shows are just like 30 minutes, but I guarantee you, you will want more when you watch it all right please believe me when i tell you ted 2 is hilarious i keep saying ted 2 ted the series is hilarious ted 2 the movie is also hilarious but the series is 
hilarious. And I am so glad that they have renewed them for a second season. It was one of the highest premiered uh, TV series on Peacock, one of their biggest hits that they've had since they uh, became a streaming service. So it made all the sense for them to renew this show for a season two. I cannot see that. I cannot wait to see the antics that they get into. Um, I believe um, not to give too much away or anything like that. We still have John in high school. I believe him going into being a senior. So we never know who we're going to see in the show. We never, uh, we don't know who we're going to see voice uh, some character or who's going to pop up. But I am so glad to see that they have renewed them for a second season. There's no information of saying when it's going to premiere or if they've even started filming. But we do know that a second season is coming and I cannot wait. Even though I'm going to have to wait. I, I say I cannot wait, but I, I, I have no choice but to wait because uh, they're not going to. Put it out early for me. <laughs> Say, no, 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 don't worry. We know you didn't. You wasn't wanting to wait, so we going to put it out tomorrow. We already went ahead and spent two weeks filming just so we could put it out so you could see it. I, we know they're not going to do that. So it's all good, though. Uh, but sticking to uh, television and streaming, I want to jump into our next thing before we move on. And that is we've gotten our first look at the prime uh, video for Batman the Cape Crusader, all right? The newest uh, animated movie that'll be coming out, Batman the Cape Crusader. I am a huge fan of this storyline, and uh, I'm excited to see these are some of just, just the images. No trailer has dropped yet. Just a few images and just the announcement that the Cape Crusader will be coming out on Prime August 1st. Now I love the D this is the this is the one thing DC don't get wrong. They be messing up video games, they be not giving us movies that they should have gave us that got the best Batman, one of the best Batmans in there, or giving us the flash. But one thing DC don't get wrong is their animated movies. The one well, you know what? The one thing let me let me let me retract that. The one thing I will say that they not necessarily get wrong, but in my opinion, I think um, they could do better on is when they switch up these animation styles. Stop doing that shit. Like, I love the uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth uh, 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 movies that are coming out. I don't like them thick-ass lines, man. Go back to Justice League War animation. That was great. Don't If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, stop changing these styles up. Like, I like the line fixtures in this image of Batman the Cape Crusader. Keep them like this. Stop trying to change it with these thick-ass lines or that fucking headache of these 3D, 2D mixture movies like y'all was doing. I was so disappointed in that one where they did Batman's uh, son and um, Superman's son. I was so looking forward to watching that, and then the animation style just threw me off. I couldn't even get through the movie. Please stop doing that. Stick to this animation style, please. This this right here. Stick to that. Stick to that, please. Um, what's going on, Cream Corn Taz? Thank you for joining as well. Uh, but yes, Batman the Cape Crusader, the movie will be dropping on Amazon Prime. I think this is a good look, especially expanding from the max deal that they have and being able to have um, new things dropping on multiple streaming platforms. So I'm, I'm definitely going to check it out on Prime. It comes out August 1st. Look forward to seeing what the first trailer is going to show us. You know, and again, it's Batman. So you can't really ever be disappointed with Batman. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's very, very hard to fuck up Batman. But you can. You can. I'm not going to say you can't. But it's very hard to fuck up Batman. So, um, that is going to be it for our, you know, we've talked about video games. We've talked about streaming. And um, so now, of course, it's time for us to jump into that good old wonderful Marvel news, man. It's, it's time to talk about our favorite shit, that good old Marvel. All right. And so we're going to go ahead and start off with our first story for Marvel. And that is that the Fantastic Four has not only found their villain, but they have found the voice of the villain in Ralph Innocent. 
Ralph Innocent has been officially cast as the voice of Galactus. Now, I know um, there were some talks and rumors around uh, Javier Bodum, I hope I'm saying his name, his last name correctly, being the voice of Galactus, uh, but we now know that it is officially Ralph Innocent. He has been known to be on The uh, Witcher as one of his uh, roles as well, and also, too, already a Marvel MCU alumni. If you do not recognize his face, that is okay. It was definitely a small part in the MCU, but he was uh, one of the Ravager pilots in Guardians of the Galaxy. If you want to go check back and see Guardians of the Galaxy, you will see Ralph Innocent's face there. So he's already a part of the MCU. So it just makes sense for him to transition into doing a voiceover. And of course, uh, in uh, being the voice of the Eater of Worlds, R.I.P. Bray Wyatt. Uh, Galactus. And it is good to see that we now know that Galactus is the official villain for the Fantastic Four. We know that they have cast already the Fantastic Four with um, Pedro Pascal as Mr. Fantastic, uh, the guy from Eddie from Stranger Things as the Human Torch, uh, Cousin! Cousin from the Bear as the Thing, and I always forget the, uh, the, um, um, the Invisible Woman's name, but I know she's been on Hobbs and Shaw and other things. She's a great actress. I, I I love her. I know her last name is Kirby. I just can't remember the first name. Uh, but she is a great actress. And I think that was the best pick for Sue Storm. That is Sue Storm in my opinion. So I think it's great that they've uh, added Galactus. They've added the voice to it. Looking forward to seeing what they're going to do with it. Not sure if it's still set in the 60s or how that's going to work. But it does look like the Fantastic Four is shaping up to be... Something, something, not going to say great, something. Uh, in my opinion, just got to say this. Um, don't think we need a Fantastic Four movie. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing it out there. Don't think we need a Fantastic Four movie. I'm so sick of this whole Marvel's first family. Like, yo, these dudes is ass. These these cats is ass. Like I don't fuck with their story like that in, in, anyway. Like the concept of how they became the Fantastic Four, that's cool. The rest of their story, mm, mm. like your villain is better than you. Doctor Doom is better than you. That's the only reason why I'm okay with you making this is because. I want to see your villains more than I want to see you. Like, I want to see a real live-action Galactus. Not that bullshit that they put out with the whole cloud and then you saw the shadow of his helmet. No. I want to see, just like how they did Eternals, I want to see that Galactus on screen. I want to see Doctor Doom, the real Doctor Doom, on screen. That's all that I uh, am anticipating with this movie. Outside of that, I don't care about the Fantastic Four. I really don't. I do not care about them. They're not, I don't feel like they're an essential piece to the MCU. Like, I could have went the entire MCU without seeing the Fantastic Four. I could have went the entire MCU without seeing them. Like, you could have really just made them cameos I would have been fine with that. I do not need a full movie about this family. But that's just me, and that's just my biased opinion, of course. But that's how I feel. That's how I feel about it. As you see, I'm, I'm talking about the villain more than I want to know about them. But glad that they have Kaz Galactus. Glad that they are going to be uh, using him in this. Wasn't sure what we were going to get. Might have got Mole Man. None of us want to see that. So we are glad to see that they have officially cast Galactus. And I look forward to hearing what kind of spin Ralph in Innocent puts on Galactus and how he brings this iconic villain and, cele and huge celestial being to life. So looking forward to seeing that. Um, more in Marvel news, we have found out that um, Marvel is pushing it back a little. Pushing it back a little. 
we received word this week that Marvel has decided uh, moving forward within their rollout for their film and television series that they will not release no more than three movies and two shows a year moving forward in their rollouts. Um, and all I can say is fantastic. Fantastic. Listen, I don't, I do not believe and superhero fatigue. That's what I will say. I do not believe in superhero fatigue. I do not think we are burned out in superhero films. Now, I will say I we are burned out in white savior films and television series. I will definitely say I'm tired of seeing white people depicted as saviors. I'll say that. Definitely tired of seeing that. But I am never tired of seeing superheroes on the screen or on the small television screen at all. So let me first off start by saying that. But I do think it is a smart tactic for Marvel to do to kind of lighten the load. And I think that's smart. Three movies, you hit three, you hit three in a year. Beginning of the year, middle of the year, end of the year. Very smart for you to do. Sprinkle in the TV shows right between, you got a great formula. You got a great formula that can work and it doesn't result in you having to spend so much money. And as Shawnee just put it, you're giving us quality over quantity. And I think that is very, very good for you to do. Now, I'm also hoping that with TV shows, you can kind of take it light too. And you can kind of take it light with these movies. Um, something I had talked about with a couple of friends of mine, I don't like that there's this timeline that we're trying to get to. You know, like I, I like that the, the layout of how they had of how we were trying to get to Avengers. But I do not feel like, you know, for someone like Kevin Feige with Marvel, that when they're rolling these things out of saying like, oh yeah, man, we want to get to Avengers Kang Dynasty and Avengers 6 by, uh, by 2026. Like, hey man, don't tell us that. Don't tell us that. This, this is this is this is your problem, white folks. Y'all don't let stuff marinate. You don't let it slow cook. You don't let the seasonings get into the get into the get into what you cooking. Now I know y'all know nothing about that because you use salt and pepper all the time. But you got you gotta you gotta let it you gotta let it simmer. You gotta let it cook. You gotta let the seasonings get in there. All right. You gotta let that, you gotta let us process what's going on. Give us a little long time. Like if you'd have said, just even throw it out. If you were to say we weren't getting Avengers until 2028 or 2029, I don't think any of us would have been upset. And you wanna know why? Because we knew we had a whole bunch of dope content coming out. We had a whole bunch of new properties, whole bunch of new stuff coming out. We wouldn't have been mad at that. You trying to rush this by bombarding us with so many movies and television shows, you have to remember, we're not going to keep up like that. Not everybody, at least. And then you you get to the point where things will start having the ball drop. Like, when you, like, you slow rolled out Avengers from Iron Man, from Thor, to everything else to get to Captain America, to get to Avengers, that was slowly played out. That's what made Avengers so dope when it finally came out because we were now hooked on these characters that you brought into live action. We couldn't wait to see like, oh, we getting a team up? Bet. But you gave us too much and you, and you, started, and you started bombarding us with way too much to where it's like, okay, now shows like She-Hulk, which was actually good, starts taking a dive because it doesn't hold up to these other things. So I'm glad that y'all are slowing down. I'm glad that you are, are taking a break. Now, I know um, one thing to go with this before we do move forward into our next topic, um, something that Big Beck 70 over at uh, YouTube wanted to know, um, what new properties or heroes would be an interesting change up for the audience? Um, so now here's my thing. Here's my thing that I'll say. When it comes to that, and I'm speaking of what we're trying to get to currently with this whole multiverse, you know, saga and what's about to change up. Um, 
I think you need to start kind of putting into categories what you want to see. One thing that I think needs to be shown is we need two, I, I, as I say in properties and heroes, for your shows. Outside of animated, outside of animated, I don't mind if you keep coming up with animated stuff like Spider-Man freshman year that's dropping this year or um, uh, Waka uh, Eyes of Wakanda, which is also supposed to be an animated series, and What If. I'm not counting that in what I'm talking about when it comes to new properties of heroes. Keep those are those as far as your what if and X-Men 97, those are your golden tickets. You can keep coming out with that. That's your Loki right there. You can you just gotta keep letting that cook, letting that come out. You ain't gotta touch that. And I hope they fixed it with the create with the uh with the showrunner that they have for the current 97 with that whole OnlyFans thing. Like I hope they can he took that down so he could get back to the work because it is a phenomenal show and we are going to talk about it that's our last topic of today is x-men 97 um but i want my television shows to tell me what's going on in the world and on earth in the current mcu and what's going on in the galaxy in the mcu so i would love to see a nova series that's one of the properties I would like. Um, I would like to see Nova as a series. Why? Because he covers the universe. And because of everything that's been happening in the universe, we have not had an anchor that takes us through what's going on in the galaxy. As we know, the galaxy, Guardi uh, Guardians of the Galaxy have, the originals at least, have split. Um, we don't know what the new ones are technically doing, but I would like to see what's happening in the universe. And if we can't use Nova, then I would like to see Star-Lord. I would not mind seeing Chris Pratt return to television because that's what we know him for. I would not mind seeing him return to television to play the legendary Star-Lord just to tell us exactly what it is that's going on. Um... So that's one of the shows. Another one, I know it's a reach. Hear me out. I would say Wong. I would like a Wong series because one, he lets us know what's going on with the world today, but he also lets us know from the magical side too what's happening in the world. I believe Wong could carry a series. Wong could carry a series, take us through different things, even different multiverses and everything. I believe he could do that. Um, and so I think those are the two show wise I would like to see now um, Big Bex over at YouTube gave something great about saying he would love to see Beta Ray uh, Bill would be a nice transitional link for large scale storytelling yes I agree with you Big Bex 70 uh, I would like to though I would like that to be one of the three movies that they would roll out and that would be within Thor 5 I would like to see Thor 5 kind of focus on the Beta Ray Bill story um, along with him. And then you can tie in Hercules. And I know Hercules was the Easter egg in Love and Thunder. But I would like to see that be one. So one, one would be the, the Thor 5. One, because you're still focusing on one of the OGs of the MCU, but also still now introducing the newer cats and the ones that may not be able to carry a series or carry a movie by themselves just yet because it has to build up. Um, another movie I'd like to see them focus on, of course, is Blade. Like, But I want Blade the way it's supposed to be, not this story that they had and the reason why Mahershala Ali walked off, which is having Blade protect some vampire princess. Do not make it about him being some fucking bodyguard. No, make it about Blade. Make it about the history of Blade. Also, too, don't make Blade a vampire just yet. Because in the comic book, he was not originally a vampire. They did that shit in the movies where he was born a vampire. That's not true. He first started off human, and I believe Morbius is the one that turned him into a vampire. Give me that. Give me that instead. Not the, not the, oh, he got to protect the princess. No, I don't, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see none of that. And then um, lastly, 
Give me a group. Give me a group. Now, now, here's what I will say. Here's what I will say. And I know a lot of people um, may not fully agree on this. Y'all may not fully agree on this. Um, Movie-wise, I need to see a group like the Thunderbolts, but something less than. And I'll say it like this. I would not mind a Defenders movie. I would not mind a Defenders movie. You can keep Iron Fist out. But I would not mind seeing a movie that led into the Defenders. Because I don't really necessarily need a series. I just need a one-off movie that has the Netflix um, characters play this. Daredevil, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones fighting a big bad. Or even a Young Avengers. Give me a Young Avengers that's that's not a big scale. I don't need a big scale Young Avengers movie, if I'm being honest with you. I don't need the $300 million budget for Young Avengers, but I wouldn't mind seeing it to be like, hey, this is what we're leading up to within the multiverse, not to be one of the big, big things, but we want for y'all to see some of these people and to see who we attach to that can continue to carry the MCU as we move forward. So those are the ways I would like to see them do it, um, and see them uh, and see how they would work. That I agree with Big Beck seventy over on YouTube. I think the Defenders movies would be a nice Civil War esque tie in. Yes, that's what I would like to see. I would like to see stuff like that. Yes, ooh, great idea as he just stated in the chat. Uh, make it like the Warriors movie in the eighties. Ooh. Now you're cooking, Frankie. Now you're cooking. You cooked with that one, man. Oh, my gosh, you cooked with that one. Like, yo, just picture, like, who could do this? Who could do this? Who could do this? You know what I, you know what I would say? I, I, need, I need an attack by something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this for right now to fill it in. The Chitauri, let's say, like, the Chitauri attack. And you need the defenders to get through Hell's Kitchen, to get through basically most of New York, to get this weapon from uh, Fisk Tower. From Fisk Tower, and they got to try to uh, get over there to get this weapon to basically send out a signal that would keep the Chitauri from coming on Earth. So the signal pretty much blocks them from being able to get on Earth because it hurts them. You give me something like that, but they got to go through like those things and give me like some of these tertiary villains and stuff like that, like Mr. Purple, Tombstone, Fiscus people, man, give me uh, uh, Smithers, uh, 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 all of them within this Defenders movie that they got to try to get through. Give me dope ass henchmen that we know from the comic books. This is where you could throw all of those into Defenders where you're not hurting the MCU. You're not trying to cast them as these high profile actors in these. You can literally just give us those characters with some, I don't want to call them B-list actors, but some more of the not high profile actors to play these parts. I think that would be a dope movie to do for the Defenders if you had all of that in there. And like you said, make it warrior style to try to get through New York to get this weapon that they need. That's what I'm saying. I'm just using the Chitauri as an example. It doesn't necessarily have to be them, but it has to be some kind of event that's a happening in New York to where no one else can come in. Like no one else can really help or it just keeps the focus there. You can even throw in S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, you know, have them talk to S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff. Um, and I agree with Harlem Ace One Two Five as well. I would love to see Scorpion done right. And actually, too, because of the fact that Matt Murdock has engaged with Spider Man, Scorpion and them could be some of those. I would not mind seeing some of these villains be in the Defender series. I mean, not the Defender series, but the Defender movie. Like Scorpion could be one of the gangs that are in there that has like. Central Park held up and they got to try to fight their way through that. So that's why I say you have a lot of leeway you can do by switching over to 
three movies a year to two TV shows a year. It gives us more leeway to when it's time for us to do Avengers or it's time for us to do uh, uh, the, the big name movies. We're more appreciative of it. And we're more excited to see it because that's what it's been leading to. That's what it's been building. You allowed everything to cook up rather than just giving us an entire buffet of properties. And then we didn't missed out on some of them because there's so many out, man. You know, like, man, I'm full. I'm full. I don't, I don't, I, I can't eat a Miss Marvel series right now. I'm, my, my tummy hurt. My tummy hurt. And yes, I call it a tummy. Don't judge me. Um... So I like this new layout. I like this new rollout that they're going to be going with. Um, I just hope that they pick right when it comes to these next series and everything um, and moving with this new format. So I look just forward to seeing like how they're going to roll this out, what's going to come first, what's priority, what's secondary. Um, all we can do is see. And so um, with that, though, that also segues into some more of our news with some of these properties that are coming out. And that is uh, going over to Mr. Coogler, Mr. Ryan Coogler, the director of Black Panther and Black Panther 2. Um, yep, yep. <laughs> Big Mac 70 said it right, man. It's like that third plate at the buffet with all the properties. It's like, I can't have no more. I can't have no more. But we got this nice, we just we just put out some Moon Knight out here, man. You got to try some of that Moon Knight. I'm like, I can't, I can't, man. Fool, I can feel it right here in my chest. But man, listen, man, we just finished cooking up some of this She Hulk casserole, bro. You gotta try it. That's one of it's one of our favorites. Oh no, I can't, I can't, man. I'm too, I'm too full off of that Ant Man Quantum Mania. Oh, oh my God, it's giving me acid reflux. Huh? Oh, I can't do it. Then I miss out. I miss out. But. We're moving on to uh, uh, to the other news. Ryan Coogler, uh, they have confirmed that we will be getting a Black Panther 3 film. And Ryan Coogler is slated to return for Black Panther 3. But it is also being said that he is being eyed to direct the live action X-Men movie. Ryan Coogler has been eyed to be the director for the, net, for the live action X-Men movie. Um, and I am excited to see it. Uh, one something that Big Beck just 70 just threw out there. Um, him being able to po possibly tie in Storm for Black Panther. Um, I, I'm not mad at this. I'm not mad at this. And, uh, because Ryan has shown over the years with doing Black Panther and doing other films that he can handle a small budget to a large budget. So I, and, and can handle within a group like setting. So to be able to bring the world of Wakanda together, to be able to have us not only get tied into, of course, Black Panther, recipes to Chadwick Boseman, to not only get attached to T'Challa, but to the supporting characters as well, as well to where we want to see those even more. I think Ryan Cougar has done a great job with that, and I think he would do a fantastic job in directing the live-action X-Men and being able to put that on such a big scale. So I am not mad at seeing this. Um, no word yet if it is official yet, but we do know that Marvel is eyeing him to direct the live-action X-Men film when they begin um, uh, uh, being able to have the properties given to them. Of course, they won't be able to fully have the property available to them until 2025. And so we only got a few, we got what, about maybe seven months left until they officially have it and they can begin casting for the live action version of X-Men. So um, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. Um, now, I will, I will say this though. Here's where we're about to go into some muddy water. Here's where we're about to go into some muddy water. I am glad that Ryan Coogler is directing this. Here's what I don't want. What I don't want is I do not want Ryan Coogler to be tied down by Marvel. Now, as to Kevin Feige, Allowing Ryan Reynolds to do what he wants in Deadpool, to go as far as he wants to in Deadpool and fixing that aesthetic. I do not want Ryan Coogler to be held back. And so this is what I, this is what I mean by that. X-Men tackles a very 
difficult subject that Marvel has yet to establish within the live MCU. Um, X-Men has to do with civil rights. It has to do with us as a human condition as it comes to how we treat people differently. Uh, could be a comparison as well to that. And so we see the harsh reality of what that is like within X-Men. And if you've seen X-Men 97, you have seen how um, humans respond to mutants. And so uh, I know in the cartoon, it's easier to translate that, but I've seen it that it's been a little more difficult for Marvel on the live action side to throw that out. And that's what I would say I kind of fear for someone like uh, Ryan Coogler to be directing the live action X-Men because this is a person that can, that has that history that knows that history and 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 can pull from that to portray that within this film. But the problem is we've seen him be held back when it comes to that. Now don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of the Black Panther movie. It is How's the best way, uh, best way for me to put it? It is definitely a historic film for us in portraying how we look as a people. The caveat to that, though, is it did not make us look good as black Americans. As you say, Shawnee, he, he didn't pull no punches, but unfortunately, he did. He did, because what it did show was, although Black Panther was great, it still showed a segregation between us and the African people. And it did not show the full reality of what us as black people deal with living within this world to a certain extent. And you could tell Ryan Coogler had to kind of walk on eggshells when it came to that. One thing that I'll say as an example for that was I do not like how they handled Killmonger as this character in the first Black Panther. What I would have liked to have seen was Killmonger actually succeed in what he was supposed to do. So I'll give you I'll give you one big example of that and how they went the baby route for it. Now we saw Killmonger take over Wakanda. He became king of Wakanda. Now I want you to picture the scene at the end of Black Panther. What happened? Killmonger dies. Somehow Black Panther is, is moved by this. And then he goes over to Oakland, same spot where Killmonger was raised, and they decide that they're going to open up an embassy there. Which, of course, we never saw again within the MCU just to throw that out there. Never saw the progress in that, and the progress was never shown in the second film. Um, that's how that movie ended. And then it also with the Easter egg of T'Challa finally exposing that Wakanda is not a third world country. It is actually one of the richest places in the world in resources, culture, all of that. Now, let me just paint you another picture of how this could have went to where it also would have shown why Killmonger's idea made sense rather than just trying to make it this whole villainous thing and not fully show it. Imagine when you saw Killmonger, when they showed him walk up to the throne and said, this is what we're going to do. He is now the leader of this great kingdom nation, whatever it is you want to call it. And he said what he was going to do. Imagine if you saw the scene where all those Black Panther ships, well, Wakandan ships, excuse me, the Wakandan ships descend over Oakland and you start to see all of the soldiers coming down into Oakland and they're taking it over, not messing with the Black people, but making sure it's like, hey, we're taking down the police. We're taking away all of this stuff. Everything that has oppressed us within this city, we are now pushing out. 
and we have taken over Oakland. And imagine you see Killmonger looking inside the home in which, in the apartment in which he was raised in, looking out the window, and you're seeing all of them marching, the Dora Milaje, all of their soldiers marching along Oakland. And it's now put into the news. And you see Ross looking at this as, yo, Wakandans have seized Oakland. And that is what exposes Wakanda as being not, not being a third world country. You saw an African-American man fulfill what he was trying to do. Now, of course, it could have been stopped. And, of course, you know, like how it was played out, Black Panther winds up, you know, killing him, even though we didn't see that. Um, and restoring this, but then playing damage control to it. Like, hey... That was that isn't that isn't what Wakanda represents, and we are we are wrong in certain ways for keeping ourselves from the world and from all of our people. That's what makes him realize, like, hey, it was wrong of my father to leave you there. It is wrong of my people to leave y'all by y'all and to the fact that this man had to come do all of that. In order for us to see that that's why we were wrong for not helping you out. Because he had to go do that. If they would have shown Killmonger actually making progress in what he was doing, it would have made that film even better. But instead, it didn't. And it, and it pretty much kind of pushed us down as black Americans to not have us be inspired. Because even at the end of the day, although I do love Black Panther, I have to say, I'm not connected to Africa. I live here. And as I stated before on this show, I've yet to see someone who is us be portrayed properly within the MCU. We have yet to see someone on screen where we like, man, I went to high school with him. You have yet to ever had that feeling about someone who looks like us on the MCU. You've yet to see that. You've, you've seen it. We've seen it with a black woman, especially with Monica Rambeau. That was the first one where we were kind of like, you know what? Yeah, man, I, I, I had Spanish class with that, with that sister. You've never seen that for someone that looked like me. We don't even have locks in the MCU. Ain't that crazy? And then the only way to do it was by depicting from a country that we don't really have association with. It was still characters within the African culture. And again, it made Africa look great. But it didn't do nothing for us as black Americans. It just kind of showed us that, yo, it was still within this within this constriction. And I, and again, I don't blame Ryan Coogler for any of that. I don't blame any of the actors or anything for that. Because you made such a phenomenal character come to life. But those are the things that where I show, like, okay, I could see where you were still kind of bound to where you couldn't really show everything. And so now that we know that... Um, and now that we also know that, it's like, okay, are y'all going to do the same thing with the live action X-Men? Because even just another example, go back to Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Not to say like it had to be this crass. The fact that I ain't hear nobody say, I ain't finna have that nigger as my Captain America. You know some, you know some red-hatted, some, some Confederate flag person was sitting here. Not my Captain America. Nah, that ain't, nah, he don't represent me. He don't represent me. Fuck him. He do not represent me. You ain't show none of that. You ain't show none of that. You didn't show none of the backlash with him having that shield. And I feel like you don't show that properly with what this society sits in. And you are right, Sean. It did show the 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 the, the different the, the the distance between Africa and African American. And in fact, I don't even really fully call us African Americans all the way. A lot of us are from here. A lot of us didn't come from Africa. You can you can go on ahead depending on what you want to believe in and stuff like that. But a lot of us ain't from there. We're from here. This is where we're originally from. Our family came were here 
not came off no boat. They were here already before the history of what they showed us was there. That's that, and that's the thing that you showed. That's the thing that you did show, and, and, and that's the thing that it's like. There's so many nuances and little pieces that it's like you you really can't hide. But I, and, and I'm not saying that they're hiding it. That maybe they just haven't found the best way to interpret that onto film. Because of course, you know, you also have to, you know, watch out for children because children also watch this. So I know you have to tell it correctly. So I'm not trying to say like they're doing a horrible job. I'm not here to shit on them about that. I'm just saying the the difficulty that it might take when it comes to portraying this, you haven't been doing it well. Because like we said, and, and then just like Harlem A said over on uh, Twitch, that she was uh, that they were disappointed and not seeing that in the show, and showed and, and he's like, yeah, show me the raw truth, show me. It's just like, yo, man, y'all don't want this, this this man as Captain America. You know, there's a group of people that are like that, a vast majority of people. Well, no, let me not say majority. A mass group of people are like that. You didn't show that, and I'm curious to show how you're gonna do a brave new world. Are people really just accepted of him? Is there not any slander on him? Are you going to show graffiti with him on there as Captain America and somebody that x it out and, 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 and say, not my captain? You don't have to throw the full N-word out there. I know we're not going to get that, but are you going to show us that? Not my captain. So, uh, and something Shanae is asking me, when it comes to hero slash comic book movies, seeing racism in a movie like that wouldn't take you out of the story. And and she's asking that a question. No, because what we just saw, X-Men. Does that take you out of the story of X-Men? Because that's basically what that is. It's discrimination. So, and it hasn't taken us out of X-Men because we know that's exactly what it's about. The only problem is, not the problem, but the only reason why it doesn't hit us like how with the question that you're asking is because they're not talking out of particular people. They're talking about mutants. So we know what mutants could potentially stand for, but it's not but it's not showing black or white, black or Hispanic, or white and Hispanic, or anything like that. It's not pointing at the ones that we know. It's pointing at a, a particular group now, which is mutants versus humans. So that's why it's easier to digest that as to your point, Shawnee. I will say that it's easier to digest that. But it is harder to digest seeing, you know, like white people hating on Captain America, wearing the picket signs and stuff like that. So that's what I'm saying. It is a line that has to be interpreted properly, but I just don't want it to be ignored, if you get what I'm saying, especially when it comes to the live action things. And I feel like they have more of a tendency to try to ignore it than they do trying to find the best way to address it. Because even in, um, again, Captain, Captain America and the Winter Soldier uh, series, that wasn't the original storyline. They had to slop the storyline a little bit because COVID hit. It was supposed to be about this uh, chemical weapon that they were going to be using. But because COVID came out, they kind of had to redirect the story a little bit and kind of make it like this whole super so uh, soldier serum thing and everything. And so, like, even like to Big Beck's point, Blue Marvel is facing similar problems with honest representation and discrimination in his original. Yes, because, you know, to Shanae's point, it is hard to digest that within comic books and to be able to tell it, but it is something that needs to be told. You know, in the same way Harlem A said it, uh, do it the same way they did Spider-Man with the crossed out posters. Maybe we will see it more in the X-Men movies. Yes, I'm again, I'm not saying you got to get racial, uh, racial bigotry words with it. I don't need N-words thrown out. I don't need... You know, slant, I don't need that type of slander to be thrown out. That's not what I'm asking for. That's not what I'm suggesting. But they do need to find a way of, you have to show the real reality in this, and you have to find a way to portray that. And I'm just hoping that they don't keep it held back moving into live action when they have Ryan Coogler, and which I just want to just throw it and say because I would love to see it happen, when he <laughs> directs the live action X-Men movie. Um... 
And to Shanae's point, for me, because real life is already like that, I need a break from that when I'm watching TV slash film. I'm black from the South. Shanae, me too. I am. I am as well. But I need to see it in some way so I know that that is still the reality. And the only reason why is because they put it into reality. They put it within this world. Now, had you put it into a more imaginary world, that would have been different, but you didn't. This is in our current reality. And so because it's in that current reality, you do still have to show the other side of that coin. Again, I don't need it to be displayed so obviously, but I do need to see that, okay, there is there is some realism here to that. Like we, and then I think to Harlem Aces point is the best way of showing like Cap, the new Cap X'd out on a poster or even having a protest of it. Not saying no bad words or anything like that, but like, like, like literally how I had just stated it. That is not my Captain America. That's it. Simple and plain. Not my Captain America. That is not my Captain. And that explains what it is so already because for that show, it touched on it a little bit already. It touched on it when it touched on two superheroes not being paid. For him not being able to get a loan being a superhero and stuff. It showed that when he went home. It did show some of those things, but it's just like I don't want it to be ignored or sugarcoated. And again, X-Men really leans onto things like that. It really leans on it. It is you have to show the confusion and the hatred that and well not even I don't even want to fully throw out hatred, the ignorance that humans have towards mutants. You cannot sugarcoat that. You cannot wrap that up in a pretty bowl for children to not understand. You have to find a middle ground to be, be able to portray that within live action. And it's just like, I hope that they don't try to hold it back when they make this movie. I hope that it's like, again, I'm not, not, not trying to get no slander thrown at it or anything like that, but it's like, I don't want it to be a sugar coated type of story, especially with what you did with X-Men 97, especially with how you've been showing it within X-Men 97. You gotta keep that same energy. If you don't, if, if, if the live action don't match 97 and that's how it, and that's how they'll fall off trying to not do it. That's how they'll fall off with not doing it. So again, I'm just saying, find a great, find a good way to be able to show that without having to take over the take over the the, the film or anything like that. Uh, Harlem A said, "Let's give the Godfather Stan Lee and his team his props. They found ways to touch on real world issues and introduce them, uh, introduce it to the comics." But I agree with everyone's point. Yeah, they did. They did. Like I said, X Men is a is a prime example of that that's why i said i just i you we still you you gotta have <laughs> i'm so sorry don't get mad at me take the good you take the bad mix it up and then you have facts of life and that is a fact of life because these are still pulled from real stories in, in some cases when it comes to the the aesthetic of it it is pulled from some points of real life and so it has to. So it has to do that. It has to do that. And I just don't want it to be held back or sugarcoated. I don't need it to be fully in our face. I just want Marvel to find a good way to be able to tell that side as well that is established within there so it can keep going. And this is just particularly for X-Men. And then also, like I said, too, I'm still waiting to see a, a black American hero that represent us that feels like, yo, that's one of us. That's one of us. That made me like, yo, man, I went to high school with that dude. Or, yo, I went to high school with that woman. I remember her. Yeah, man, me, me, and, Tisha, me and Tisha used to uh, share our Dunkaroos together. I know her. She done came up. I want that feeling. I want that feeling. I love our representation that we got, but I need that feeling. Because everybody else got that feeling. I loved the representation like kids felt dressing up like Black Panther, being able to say, yo, I finally got a hero that look like me. I'm so glad for that. I'm never finna take that away, and I'm so glad Ryan Coogler did that. Now, though, 
which is something we do we need to do as a people. We gotta ask for more. We can't we can't chitlin this. We can't do the chitlin thing with this. We can't just take what they give us. We're like, oh, they finally gave us a black ribbon. No, okay, cool. I'm glad you did that. Now, I want somebody to feel like me. I want somebody that I, as a black American man, can relate to in all aspects. Not just a few things, and, and, and especially of just, oh, because we look the same. I want to feel like, yo, I know this cat. I know this guy. Uh, Big Beck said, I think uh, Mayor Luke Cage could hit that feeling. He had the potential to do that, but they messed him up. They turned him into this, this sugar-coated, I stand for my people type something like, like no, man. I, I Man, no, no, no. I, he, and what was bad about it was he didn't act like he was from New York, and he didn't act like he was from the South. That did not, I'm sorry, like, yo, and, and, and Sharnae, if you're in here, did Luke Cage feel like he was from the South? Not at all. I'm saying he wasn't, in my opinion. Uh, Sharnae said, I watched the uh, Shred of a comic book. Falcon didn't give that feeling because it was, he was militant. And you know, and you know what it is, too, though? He, he was, and, and, it, and it was like that, but you still could have gave us some of those things. I just, and you know what it may be, too? Maybe it's just, they don't do their research on men from the South is what it is because Falcon was supposed to be from New Orleans and I did not feel like he was from New Orleans. And to Big Beck's thing, and to Harlem, Harlem A said, nope, to Luke Cage. Big Beck 70 said, nah, they made him corny. That's what they did. They made him, you know what it was too? They made Luke Cage like he was in the 70s still. Like, oh, sweet Christmas. I can't wait to go in. Shuck and jive at the barbershop and, and, and keep hiding myself. Be like, oh, I got to do it for Harlem. I got to do it. Oh, I'm about, I'm about to go and, and, and take on Cottonmouth because that's what I got to do because I got to stand for something. That's what I heard every time Luke Cage talked. I did not believe Luke Cage was somebody to not fuck with. You supposed to be scared of Luke Cage when Luke Cage walked up. When you saw him, like, oh, shit, that's Luke Cage. Hold on. Especially if you was a criminal. Especially when you was a criminal. Man, I, I just, I did not get that with him. I did not get that with him. So that's why I said maybe they just don't, haven't done enough research to portray men from the South. Because like I said, I don't think Falcon felt like he was from New Orleans. I ain't even hear this man say Ward at one time. At all. That man didn't say that one time in that whole series. So it's just kind of like, okay, if, if, if we're not going to do it, then why are y'all saying he's from there? And then don't try again. Don't hide the whole because he's from the military. Now he's going to act like this. No. No. Give me someone that we can relate to. Give us someone that we can relate to. Now, um, I will I will throw it back right quick uh, just to touch on something that, um, to answer just something that Big Beck 70 asked about, if they should bring back the live Batman, if they should bring back Batman the Animated Series. No. I don't think they should bring that back. I don't think you should bring back Spider-Man 98 either. Those ended well. X-Men 97 was something that could keep continuing because of how it ended. And we're going to jump into that in just a second. Um... And even to Sean A's point, I'm not going to lie, I didn't watch Luke Cage, so I can't add to this. I'll take your word. For, the fact someone from the South did not watch Luke Cage, the fact that a black person did not watch Luke Cage tells you the disconnect that y'all made with that. You're not making black American superheroes. You're just giving us black superheroes. And there is a vast difference. And I hope I said that correctly. You're just giving us superheroes. As a matter of fact, you're not giving us black superheroes. You're giving us superheroes that are black. And that's it. Y'all are completely missing the personality. You're completely missing diving into the culture. And that's what you're doing. The same way when y'all made Miles Morales get Thor's hammer and he spray painted graffiti on it. 
What? No. No. You can't know. So I don't get. I don't know if you're not doing your research. I don't know if you're not going talk to folks that are like us, or having them in there in the uh, what what are those focus groups to say, hey. I don't think Miles would have done this. I don't think this is how Luke Cage would act. Especially if you're going to tell them within this current time. Even from, like Harlem A said, I'm from Harlem and South Carolina, so I could tell the difference when it dropped. You haven't gave us that. You have not gave us that, and it's just, I don't think that you're doing, Marvel, you're doing your research onto us as a people. I think you're doing it in a general concept because you're too scared to touch on it. And if you're going to move like that, you're not going to be able to have a fantastic X-Men film if you continue to move like that. So that's just me. That would that that's just me with that. Like yo, like I said, when it comes to black superheroes, it needs to be done better on the personality standpoint. You know, and I and I'll tell and I'll tell it to you like this, and and not to make it sound bad. So I don't want it to be taken out of, out of out of context, but of course it probably will, so it doesn't matter, but the blackest thing I saw in MCU, in the entire MCU, is the conversation between Rhodey and Nick Fury and Secret Invasion. And the fucked up thing about that was that wasn't even Rhodey. That was a fucking alien. And that was the blackest moment that we had in the entire MCU. The way they held that conversation. That was the blackest conversation I ever heard in my life on the MCU. And it was between a black man and an alien. Portraying a black man. So come on, man. Like, again, I'm, I'm not, you know, y'all know I get into my conspiracies at times, but it's like, yo... Stop giving us a caveat when it's time to represent us. Do us right. Just like how y'all did X-Men 97 right, do us right. And stop treating us like this. Stop. Give us somebody. Do your research. Allow us to be, uh, to be portrayed. Allow us to be seen. Someone that we can relate to and be like, yo, I would, I, I don't even dress up for Halloween. I'll dress up for him as Halloween though, because you did him right. I feel like my, the, the, the kid in me inside feels like, yes, I can connect with this person. So that's just me. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to keep harping on it and everything like that. Cause we got, we got to get into X-Men 9 or 7. As, as my nephew said, were you watching the X-Men 9 or 7? I like, yeah, I was watching X-Men 97. No, 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 97. We're going to jump into a little bit of that X-Men 97. Um, again, now, if you haven't seen the latest episode, we about to get our spoiler on. So if you haven't, please go check out one of the other uh, episodes that we have done. Uh, but we're going to jump into this uh, next one. Tolerance is Extinction Part 2. And we saw a lot of stuff happen and uh, I'm going to explain this into the way that I would explain it. So get your popcorn ready because we talking about some good old X-Men 97. So in the latest episode, we're jumping into part two of Tolerance uh, uh, is Extinction. Uh, in the previous episode, Magneto came out and showed and put his big dick on the table and shut all that shit down that Bastion was trying to do. Boy, you think you're going to come out here with some good old mutant scroll or some mutant uh, sentinels in this human stuff with this little liquid nanobot? I got something for your ass. I'm shutting it all down. I'm shutting it all down. Fuck your, fuck everything. Fuck all your, your, mag your magnetics. Fuck your iPhone. Fuck your TV. And fuck them sentinels. This nigga shut down the magnetic plates. This dude said, I'm about to destroy the earth. And that's what he did. That man shot up into the space and did the ultimate Radio Shack attack and shut everything down. And 
as that was happening, um, Professor X landed in his galactic Uber into the X mansion and has somehow returned. And let me tell y'all something. If this episode taught me anything, it taught me Professor X ain't shit. Professor X ain't shit and Professor X is a gaslighter. The, he is the ultimate gaslighter. All right, let's just talk about this particular scene that y'all seeing right here. This particular scene, uh, Charles comes back. Uh, well, th this one, of course, this one is after the one I'm talking about. Uh, but Charles comes back and is talking with Cyclops and Gene. And Cyclops got every reason to be mad. Cyclops looks at him and say, really? Really, my nigga? Word? That's what we doing. You just going to give the dude we've been fighting for about 60 years now, you just gonna leave him everything? You just gonna leave that man everything? Not only did you leave him everything, you didn't even leave us a book on what to do. You didn't leave us a video, nothing. You didn't telepathically tell Gene, nothing. You didn't give us no instructions on anything and you left it to this dude? Word? And then here come Charles' old gaslighting ass talking about, I just, you have been my first student, you and Gene. I just didn't want you to have to keep living this life or having to keep coming back. I wanted you to be able to have some type of normal life. No, bitch. No, bitch. You wanted a normal life. You was tired of having to deal with these kids because you know Magneto is right. You got tired of the fight, Charles. That's what happened to you. You got burnt out. You had ran this shit for too long, no pun intended, and you wanted to dip. Not only did you, and then not only did you not even be upfront about it, you decide I'm going to fake my death. Have all these people who look up to you, who are you are a mentor to, who you have saved and taken care of, you decide, I'm not even going to tell y'all the truth. I'm going to just fake my death and then go get with some of the strongest alien races to get. And, and then I'm going to get some ass from them and I'm going to become king of the entire race. Like we don't see what you doing. You wanted to promote peace, but you doing the same shit Magneto doing. Now you got an entire basically army you could have had until the princess said, nah, nigga, uh, Milky Way is ghetto. We don't go over there. That's the hood. We don't we don't go to the Milky Way. We don't we don't partake over there. That's the projects to us. Especially your punk ass planet. Nigga, that is section 80 for real. That's that is they that lady said oh, uh Earth is the Oakland of the universe. They're like, nigga, Earth is Detroit. We don't we don't go over there. We don't we don't fuck with that planet. And then you got mad, and now it's like, oh no, I'm now just Oh, my head, my head, my X-Men are in trouble. Bitch, your X-Men been in trouble. Been in trouble. How you didn't, how your brain didn't register when Storm lost her powers? Then you gonna gaslight Scott and them, Scott and Gene to say, well, no, I just, I just wanted y'all to have a normal life. And Scott said the best. No, bitch, you wanted a normal life. You already knew, man, we in this shit till we die. Ain't, we didn't have no problems being here. We didn't have no problems being a part of this because this is our family. This is who we fuck with. Jean Grey think of Aurora as her sister. Why we want to go somewhere? We here. Yeah, I didn't have my thoughts about it before, but this is what I know. What I'm going to do, go into the regular world, hide my powers, tell my child to hide their powers and stuff like that, just so we can what? Live normal and be able to watch 90 Day Fiance in peace? No. We chose this fight. You chose this fight. We lost people choosing this fight. And your punk ass gave up. That's what Professor X showed us. You gave up. You dipped on it. Bro, you abandoned your X-Men. You abandoned your X-Men. Then gaslighted Magneto even more to go, oh, this how I'm going to trap your ass. I'm going to fake my death. I'm going to leave you everything and then tell you that you got to continue my message. And what Magneto do? Magneto was like, man, you know what? 
I already kind of feel responsible for what happened to Charles. So I'm going to do right by Charles. I'm going to do right by Charles. I'm going to do right by his X-Men and make them my X-Men. And as we didn't seen in this in these in these episodes, Magneto was really trying. He was really trying. And y'all know he was trying because Magneto quick to kill some humans. Man, he don't give a fuck. Magneto quick to knock off a regular without any hesitation. And the fact that he didn't, especially when they were at the UN and Storm got shot. Man, Magne old Magneto would have killed everybody. But because of your punk ass, he was like, you know what? To honor Charles' death, I'ma swallow, I'ma swallow what I I'ma swallow my pride. I'm and because of what was going on. I'm, I'm, I, because I feel like Charles was right when this could work. And he really tried. And then what happened? The pinnacle of what Magneto helped create in Genosha. He watched people get eviscerated. Not just killed, eviscerated. And you saw it with that little small child from the from the brother. I always forget their name in, in the the ones that live in the sewer and stuff like that. I think the Mo Modox or something. Like, not Modox. The Mo I know it started with an M, uh, and I, and I, and the name is uh, eluding me right now. But uh, he had to watch that little boy die. The fear in his eyes. The fears in his eyes the first time when he felt like, yo, like I'm not going to make it. And it's like, no, I'm going to take you to a safe place. And felt safe. Felt amongst his people. Could walk outside. Be good. Ain't got to get judged. This man is now sitting in a force field with a beam being shot at him. Knowing that unless didn't, once this dude drop his hands... I'm not gonna make it. Morlocks. That's what it was. Morlock. I kept. Yeah, I knew it was like M O something with Ock at the end, and I was like, no, it's not Morlock. I said, we know who that is. I was like, the Morlock, the Morlocks, to watch that little boy die in front of his face and get eviscerated in his face, and then to be held captive by the people that did it, and to be and to get talked shit about too in front of him. Magneto said, man, fuck y'all. Fuck all of you. Fuck y'all. I don't give a fuck what you're talking about. I don't give a fuck what you're saying. And then all for that to be the plan of to make them enslaved to build you a better America? Sound familiar, though, don't it? Sound real familiar, don't it? That's why I said there's a lot of shit. You, <laughs> that's why I say, yo, y'all ain't going to be able to hold back on that live action X-Men. Because you, come on now, you going to enslave a particular group of people to build you a better America. Sound familiar? Sound familiar in real life, does it? Magneto said, fuck that. Not only am I shutting down, and that, and that just lets you know how powerful Magneto is. That man said, oh, yo, oh, fuck your whole idea. Nigga, I'll shut everything down. I'll shut this whole shit down. That man literally can't cut the lights off on everybody. And said, not only am I doing that, I don't care if this planet go to shit. I don't give a fuck. Fuck your tectonic plates. And rolls up asteroid M out of the water. And said, I'm going to show y'all. Since you destroyed Genosha, I'm going to make this one where you can't go do that shit. You can't come over here and do this stuff. You got to come for you got to combat me. You want to come on asteroid M. And not only doing that, they trying to ban the, you know, Charles bands the X-Men together. They get to the swamp and they trying to, he was like, yo, I'm a, I'm going to talk to Magneto, man. Let me talk to Magneto. I'm like, first and foremost, how the fuck you don't apologize for faking your death? How you don't even talk about why you did because you didn't explain it to nobody that's why the whole x-men wasn't fucking with you y'all saw before he even came to magneto in the episode everybody was looking at him like so you not dead um we had a funeral for you uh 
Um, Gambit made baguettes for your funeral. Um, I wore a suit. I don't even you know how I feel about wearing suits. I'm not saying I cried at your funeral, but I'm not gonna not say I didn't cry at your funeral. We just we not gonna talk about that. We don't have time, my X-Men. We have to save the world. We only have 12 hours before it falls. Yeah, 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 I get all that. I get all that. But you're not dead. And um, you know who is dead? Gambit. And he dead dead. You know, like we, we, we saw you die in a hospital bed, and now you here. We saw Gambit burnt alive. And he not here. So, is he out in the car with you since you didn't came back to life? Oh, he not in the car with you? Oh, so you, so you didn't really, okay. You can see why everybody in that episode had that look on their face with him. When you see, with the image you see right here. When they find Magneto, Magneto's rising up uh, asteroid M again. And, and Charles is like, stop. And Magneto's like, fuck that. Fuck that. I listen, I listened to your punk ass for 60 years. I've listened to your punk ass. Tell me that these people, that we can live in harmony, that we can do this. And they just showed us we'll never live in harmony. And I'll tell you this, and this what made Magneto even colder in this episode and made you latch on to him more because of now what his mission was. I will never allowed myself to see another mutant slaughtered because I decided to follow what you told me to follow. I had to watch innocent mutants lose their lives trying to do your path, trying to do what you said was right. And not only was it wrong, you dipped out on even on what you were saying. You left. You ran to a whole different fucking planet. And I had to watch people who I promised were safe lose their lives. Man, that speech touched them X-Men so bad. That I'm telling you. Now, we saw Rogue and Sunspot join. I promise you, a whole bunch of other than wanted to walk over there. They, they didn't walk over there because they dedicated to Charles. They, walked over, they didn't walk over because the other ones didn't. I'm telling you, had Gene and Cyclops walked over there, all them X-Men would have walked over there with Magneto. All of them would have went over there. Because if you look at it, you saw their face. They knew Magneto was right. They knew Magneto was telling the truth. But because the fact that they do still have humanity in them, they don't want to see the earth destroyed. But they knew. A knew. When he said that they was like, nah, bro, he he right, dog. You you like, bro, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what they're like. Yo, man, like he got a big point like, Charles, do you have a rebuttal? So they left. Now they got to prepare to try to stop Magneto. They got to try to stop Magneto, but X, the X-Mansion is destroyed, so they got another location, man. And so I thought it was cool with this because the location had them in the old school gear. And I ain't mad at this, man. This, this, this right here was a flawless image. And then I love the callback that DeMaio put in here with Cyclops when talking to Cable. He gave him the suit, and he said, yo, what is this? He said, what was you expecting, black leather? Come on, man! Come on! If you don't remember the reference, man, the Fox 20th Century, the first X-Men live-action film, when they had gave Wolverine the, episode, uh, the, the suit, and Cyclops was like, what was you expecting, yellow spandex? Man, come on! That was so dope. That was so great. And even another Easter egg, seeing um, that restaurant get destroyed that was called the Mayo's Diner. That is the name of the uh, the showrunner for this current X-Men 97. So I'm glad that they still were paying homage to him even in the comic, even in the series. But to see them in the old school get up, man, to see Wolverine back in the brown and yellow, to see Cable in the old school outfit, Forge, Jubilee rocking her new one, which I love, the black suit of it. It makes her look more like an X-Men. Um, yeah, yellow spandex. Yeah, coldest line, yellow spandex. Uh, to see Jean Grey in her old outfit as they're going to split 
and uh, handle both sides and trying to stop Bishop and to be able to stop Magneto. And then um, even seeing Morph, Morph has just been, I feel like Morph is the MVP of X-Men 97. Because he has just been, as far as a teammate goes, he has been one of the best teammates within this entire series. And has turned into some of the best versions of characters to show us. From Quicksilver, Archangel, to the Hulk. It is just so great to see Morph back and to really be doing his thing. And they even called, they even, ooh, boy, listen, the way Rogue called that shit out. When they said, like, yo, man, because she dropped truth on them before this scene even happened when she said yo man look at morph and what happened to him he was here for just a minute and y'all abandoned his ass and i was like yo this episode just got so real on so many levels like this was just like a this was a 30 minute quadruple entendre of conversation going on because it's right Morph was in there for two seconds in the original series and he disappeared. We was like, wait, wait, wait. I was like, I remember somebody in this. It was a dude that got killed by Sentinels, right? And I had forgot that was Morph. And Morph didn't come back till like four seasons after. And it was like, oh, now I remember that dude. And the reason why I didn't remember him because he didn't look like how he walks around now. He had on some regular face with this like little, you know, like, pixie haircut uh that was walking around and we didn't see him as his normal self that was the one where uh wolverine kept having that flashback about and we were like yo okay who was this x-men that we didn't see that was morph that was the one he was having problems with about trying to get over it because he felt like yo he failed him that was who they were talking about and i was like wow just to be able to recall that though and say like yeah man like Y'all don't take y'all didn't take care of him, and y'all supposed to call us family. Y'all ain't even go look for this dude. And I was like, hey man, Charles, that's on you, cause you could have executed that and you didn't. But we had two fights going on. We were going. Uh, I believe they went to. Uh, not no no, they didn't go to Genosha. I can't recall the island they went to, the name of it at least. But this is where basically Bishop's base was. Um. So yeah, one team going there um, with Morph, Beast, and um. Jean Grey and Cable, and then you had the rest going to Asteroid M to try to basically have Charles mind uh, mind rape Magneto, which is exactly what that was, because Magneto did not consent to that, and that's why he put on a helmet. And um, you 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 have to get consent before you go mind fuck somebody. That that is very important for uh, my telepaths to know. You can't just be out here mind raping people. That's not cool. It's not cool at all. Um, and I see why Magneto was so upset. Um, so they go out, uh, it does not go well on either side for them. The X-Men were not very successful. Um, uh, uh, Bastion was ready for these boys. They were trying to put in like this, this, this US, plug this USB into him somehow and shut him down. That wasn't happening. Then we come to find out Mr. Sinister was there messing with Jean Grey's head. Jean Grey was kind of fighting back and kind of coming through with and stuff like that. Then all of a sudden, before we find out, man, this man got his got his hooks into Cable, man. It's sinister and then hit him with the morph, bro. And, and now he's fighting Jean Grey. And you know what I will say, too? I don't know how they're going to play this in the 10th episode because I don't know... If Jean Grey dies from the blast that they're doing or what's about to happen, they kind of left that open-ended for the next episode. But um, that would have been a little more powerful if Cable would have accepted Jean as his mom, which I still also kind of find stupid that they're doing that. Like, oh, no, that's not my mom. Madeline Pryor is my mom. You know Madeline is is Jean Grey, right? Like you know, both of them are your mother. You just came out of one and not the other, but it's the same person. They both got the memories. They she like they like it even stated in the episode before this. She has the memory and the feeling of carrying you. And if I'm just throwing this out there. Motherfucker, you knew them for like three minutes and then went into the future. 
you you know, you wasn't raised by Madeline for you to just have this loyalty to her like that. Like that made I, I just don't think that made a lot of sense. Like you should be happy that your mother is still here because it's still your mother. That's like you having a surrogate child, like somebody else birth your child and you be like, you ain't my mama, that's my mom. No, it's not. Nigga, you I it was my egg. You were just incubating in another oven. You're still my child. Take the DNA test. Y'all go to y'all go to 23andMe. Y'all finna match up 100. percent So I just I didn't I I really wish that would have been a little bit better told because then it makes him switching over hit a lot more of like oh man that dude about to kill his mama he about to lose two moms. Damn that's messed up. I did love the scene though where they were in the Cyclop Porsche and they were fighting uh fighting all of the Sentinels and stuff like that. I did like that from the previous episode. And I will say this series did a great job with the team up. They really did a fantastic job of you utilizing the team aspect from the combos and stuff like that from Wolverine having Gambit on his back and then you know making the uh kinetic energy on his claws watching again you know Wolverine and Nightcrawler go at it watching uh Beast and some of the other mutants fight and everything seeing Jubilee and Sunspot uh Morph's uh combination but then watching Cable, Jean and Cyclops go they did a really great job of showing why the X-Men dynamic as a family works well and they also told showed why Charles need to take his bitch ass on somewhere you are not a leader you just showed me you are toxic as fuck that man is the future of X-Men he need to put out an album <laughs> He need a whole album called, called Dirty Wheelchair. That's what he need to do. Dirty Wheelchair. That's what he need to throw out. Because you toxic as fuck. I want to get a meme like that. I hope somebody can make this. And they see it. I want a meme of like Charles in his wheelchair with the phone like this. Be like, I was going to come save you. But, you know, I just been thinking about you. You know how I did that future meme like this? We need one of Charles in a wheelchair doing that. <laughs> be like, yo, man, I text your mom just to see if you was okay because, you know, it's Mother's Day and Mother's Day is always important. And I know you didn't grow up with yours. Like, I need something like that because Charles toxic as fuck. And that's what this whole season showed us. You toxic as shit. And you kind of responsible for a lot of this stuff happening because you not really that good of a leader. And it showed in this series. So I, I, I'm curious to see how they're going to respond to him afterwards because even though you can see in this picture, they kind of, like, you can see in this picture that all of them are kind of done with Charles. Like, we know we got to get through this to save the world, but we kind of done with you, dog. Like, we don't I, we don't know how to trust you. And so um, we're not sure what's happening with, with Bastion uh, but it, it does lead to them going to fight uh, on Asteroid M um, with, with with Rogue and Sunspot helping out Magneto. We we see the um, the rift between Sunspot and Jubilee. You know Jubilee kind of being over him for choosing Magneto and stuff, and them kind of having their battles out. And then shout out to them also. You know stepping Jubilee up from just being like kind of this like kid of the X Men to really showing that she can hold her own as a group member. In, in very like big situations. So I was glad to see that um, seeing Cyclops, you know, continue to do his thing as well as Wolverine and them trying to get, you know, Magneto's helmet off so he could get mind fucked by Charles, which almost works. It almost works. And you know what? Like I said with Magneto, Magneto has some of the realest shit said in this episode when he was like, I have been wanting to say this to you for the longest time, my old friend, shut the fuck up. And that is that was so needed. Yes, shut up. Everything you've said is now bullshit because of what you pulled. I don't need to hear nothing. I'm done with your speeches. Fuck your speeches, nigga. You go, you go sit in Genosha and watch all them people die like how I had to. Shut the fuck up. 
So much to the point this man threw that man, threw his helmet on Charles' head and started closing that bitch in. Be like, I'm so And you know what it was? I know he wouldn't say this, but it gave the epitome of this. He was like, oh, I'm so sick of you, nigga. I'm so, oh, I'm about to, mm, I want to just squish your fucking head in this helmet. I was like, oh, I just want to pop your fucking shit for what you done done. And then, of course, man, Wolverine in all his fashion had to come plunge his blades into Magneto. In, into Magneto because... I, and I understood why they were they they were almost successful in stopping Magneto to reverse everything with the magnetism from destroying the Earth, but they needed Bastion to be stopped first, and Bastion wasn't finished yet. And shout out to Cyclops for being able to go like, no man, I'm not letting nobody else die because of you. We stop Magneto and we save humans. So what? Bastion can keep doing what he was just doing? No, we need more time. You need to figure this out. But of course you ain't got nothing to figure out because all you do is talk. That's it. That's all you fucking do is talk. So you're going to give him some more time. And then Wolverine was like, I got you. You take that, bub. I know, man, look. I know Wolverine dick must have been hard as fuck when he stabbed Magneto. I know he been waiting to do that shit. But um, Magneto uh, definitely didn't take that shit lying down. Now did he? Um, if you saw towards the end, uh, I think everybody learned a valuable lesson as to why you don't fuck with Magneto. As you can see in this image here, oh, nigga, you gonna stab me with metal claws? Oh, I got something for your ass. And proceeded to rip the adamantium out of Wolverine. And I mean, when I say this image is spot on to the comic book of when this happened. And just to show you, Magneto ain't nothing to fuck with. That's what he showed when he pulled all this shit out. And the way it, and the way it was happening before it got pulled out, because it was like this, and you start seeing the, the, you know, the yellow uh, outlines and stuff. And I'm like, and I'm so glad that they do it like that. I'm so glad that that's how they portray uh, Magneto's powers as well as they do with like uh, Jean Grey and Professor X with the blue telepathy uh, lines. I'm glad they showed it like that because you instantly caught what was happening. And it was like, oh, is he going to really do it? And you hear Charles, no, Eric, don't do it. And you just see this image. You don't even really see the full thing of it. You kind of just see this and it's kind of panning in towards you of this being pulled out and the, the episodes go off. Fucked Wolverine up. And if you know the comic book, I find it interesting as to what's going to happen when we get a season uh, two, which it, ha it has to happen. There's no way we can't have a season two of this. No way at all we, can have, we can't have a season two of this. Um... I'm interested to see if they're going to follow that storyline like they have in the comic books because, um, you know, I don't know if they're going to portray it in here, but in the comic book, uh, Wolverine does survive it by burning out his entire regenerative uh, powers. So after this happens to him, he has to use all of his power up and basically uh, that's how he heals himself. And he goes back to, you know, you know like bone claw Wolverine, but... What a lot of people may not know, or you know, some, you know, may, maybe a few of you know, um, him and Sabretooth are related and stuff like that. You know, in some comics, he's his brother, some, some of them he's not, you know, depending on what you want to say, he is his brother. Now, the difference between the two is because of Wolverine's animanium, he was able to keep his sanity because he has to constantly heal because of the animanium skeleton. So that's what had him keep his humanity. If not, he would have turned into Sabretooth. That's what he was originally supposed to turn into, which is uh, uh, to Beck's, uh, the Big Beck 70s uh, point, feral-ass Wolverine, which is what he becomes. He becomes this feral version of himself where Wolverine is not nothing to fuck with. Like in the comic books, I believe, um, it was either, I know it was X-23, and I may be confused if it was Jubilee or Rogue that went with her, 
to go look for Wolverine. I want to say it was Jubilee. I think it was Jubilee that went, went with X-23 to look for him. And this motherfucker is just in the jungle. First of all, watching them the whole time. They don't even know he watching them. And this dude is literally walking around like Wolverine, like, yo, like, bone claws out, I'm ready to fuck anything up, type Wolverine. Like, bro, mind is gone. Man is a pure animal. So I wonder if they'll show that in the next season, um, which also ties in because I think it was, I think he went back to, I think he was in Africa when they found that because they were searching for him by Wakanda. Again, I could be off on some of the things, but I do look forward to seeing if that's how they're going to carry this um, into the next one. No idea how episode 10 is going to end. I know they're getting to some of, uh, some of the most controversial stories within the X-Men uh, comic book. Uh, especially from Extinction uh, into a couple of other ones. So, again, not fully sure how they're going to play it fully out, but we got to find out on this season finale that's going to hit Wednesday. And, uh, and you know, for me, uh, I have given X-Men 97 before it even ends 10 out of 10. It is a 10 out of 10 series. Um, I, will, I can even say having a conversation with some of my other group members that, it's better than Loki. <laughs> like, Lo Loki was serving on a silver plate, giving us some of that good, good. But, man, X-Men 97 is like Mastro Steakhouse, man. All the way from the from the appetizers to the butter cake dessert, man. It got, it just, oh, got me full. Got the itis. Just want to. That's how it got me feeling. It got me feeling fat and happy. That's what it got me feeling like. It got me, it got me feeling happy. It got me feeling fat and happy. So yeah, man, I look forward to seeing what the season finale is gonna hold for X Men ninety seven. Um, and I just, man, keep keep doing y'all thing with that series. You got gold right there. Don't let it change. Don't let don't 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 do nothing different. Don't do nothing different. Keep it coming. I hope they bring back uh, uh, Mr. DeMaio again. I hope they get that situated. Take that OnlyFans down, bro, because we need you. We need you to keep being able to pump this out, man. But uh, I just want to say that is it for another great episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book. Um, I do got ba Big Back 70. I do got room for that last uh, uh, dessert plate. I got, I got one more episode I can take in, man. Go ahead and bring that last dessert plate over here, man. But I want to say thank you once again for checking out another episode of Shroud of a Comic Book. And th again, thank you so much to the people who had commented on the last episode and just really uh, letting me know that y'all loving the format when it comes to the solo thing. Of course, like I said, I will have guests on here for different episodes, but I want to make sure we stay consistent. We're coming out every Saturday uh, talking about what's happened throughout the week. So I really appreciate that. Um, it was kind of in my head of... You know, not putting this stuff out with just me. Didn't think it might be strong enough. Again, nothing that anyone has said or anyone has been showing to me. Just all kind of up in here. So I just want to say thank you for the positive feedback on that. It really helped me get over that mental block that I was having in being able to do this and continuing to step out onto my own and kind of get out of that shadow to where, you know, when you hear my name, you hear just me being associated to certain stuff and not other people. So I definitely appreciate all the positive feedback. Thank you for the ones that are putting it in the comments right now of just tell, saying that this was a great episode. I do truly appreciate it. And I'm going to keep coming uh, with this and stuff like that. Really appreciate that. Big Beck 70, the Zell 29, Shawnee, uh 869. Thank you so much for those words. I do truly appreciate it. And I appreciate y'all tuning in on a Saturday morning or afternoon depending on where you are thank you so much for checking out this episode uh let me know how you're feeling about x-men let me know how you're feeling about all the other news that we talked about from mark hamill as the joker to ted being renewed to uh us finding out who's voicing galactus now let me know in the comments how you feel about these things and make sure that um you continue to support the show, the show uh, full version will be on my personal YouTube channel. So that's YouTube.com slash Will Farrow. That's where you'll be able to see the full 
episode um, and everything like that. And I appreciate that, Big Bay 70. You will start to see some behind-the-scenes stuff that I'll show you. I'll show you all when I do my graphic stuff, my editing work. We'll do that on my Twitch, which I hope you are all following. If you're not, please go follow on twitch.tv slash Will Farrow because I will be streaming on there as well as we stream uh, The Fleet on Wednesday. That's when me and some of my good friends, we play Grand Theft Auto 5. Some of the last days of Los Santos since, you know, 6 is getting ready to come out next year. Come watch us play some of the last days in uh, Los Santos. We play Heist. We do a whole bunch of fun stuff and we have great conversations. So that happens Wednesday on my Twitch channel. Um, I do it live on the YouTube uh, Arcade Tokens page along with Shred of Comic Book as you can see. But we don't keep those up. So we kept the last episode up this Wednesday but we won't keep those up. It'll just be for live purposes for you to view and then we'll put out recaps within the uh, Arcade Tokens channel. So you'll get a, a the first 10 minutes of Stratum comic book on RK tokens that'll lead you to my page and as well as just a recap of the fleet stream on RK tokens so you can come check it out <clears throat> on my page and then uh, we will be coming back with Geek Blasphemy we have some more episodes coming through so uh, we'll be you'll catch me on my Twitch editing some of those to be able to put out as well so as I said just keep staying tuned each week going to keep consistently having con uh, content coming out make sure you follow my socials as well everything is will farrow p-h-a-r-a-o-h -A -A that's on instagram that's on my tiktok and that is on x slash twitter whatever you want to call it and facebook but that is it for today i appreciate all of y'all checking out again like subscribe and comment on this video when it drops on my channel I appreciate each and every single one of y'all, and I hope that y'all have a wonderful Saturday and a wonderful Mother's Day. If anybody's watching this that is a mom, happy Mother's Day. If your mom is still, if you are blessed to still have your mother here, please make sure you shower her with love and affection tomorrow. Even if you do it already today, not saying that you don't do it, but just be able to sh uh, sh make sure you show that appreciation. And to the ones that don't have their moms here with them, just know that even though they're not there, you still got family here in this community and you still got family around you. So if you feel in some, any kind of way, please lean on your closest people that day. So you can also continue to feel that love as well. So I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Y'all and have a fantastic Saturday and enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I will see y'all Wednesday on Twitch when we get ready to fleet. But until then, y'all enjoy the rest of y'all weekend. Peace out.